Hello and welcome back to Church Online. This video officially marks one year of our Church Sunday services going online. Last year I remember chatting to our church leaders and there's us thinking about this concept of our church services going online for a short time and what would it look like, how would it work and that's right at the point of when nobody really knew what was going on but something was coming our way and people everywhere genuinely started to worry as well. We all watched the news and we listened to those now famous government speeches. So here we are 52 weeks later and I remember the last proper service we all had together. It was on the 1st of March when attendance was full and everyone was there and the place was bouncing as usual. My dad was preaching on connecting with Jesus. It was part of our Love Yourself series. We didn't know something was about to happen and how in just two weeks our lives were about to change. But alas, here we are, a year on, the final push with glimpses of normality. Holly and I often ask each other questions like, what did we take for granted? Or what will we do more of when restrictions lift? Where's the, the first restaurant we'll eat in? What have we learnt and uh, what's changed in us for the better? Now something we've all missed terribly is each other. Sure we've had the quick uh, doorstep visits, the back garden hangouts, the walks down by the, the, the water's edge and we know there are people who have stuck to and listened to the restrictions that have been placed upon us. And we also know that there are people who felt like they didn't like restrictions being placed upon them and they carried on with life regardless. However, one thing we all have felt, restricted or not, is we've all missed each other. We've missed that normal face-to-face -face social interaction and connection over the simple things like coffee or sitting with someone uh, in their house or even at the workplace. The text messages, phone calls, video chats have been great, but they're pretty much a sticky plaster over the real issue that was forced upon us and that was the loss of social connection. There are many little social connections that have all been taken away from us and as we know we're on the road moving forward to life as we know it, those small little connections that have left a massive gap in what was our normal life will now be coming back. For some, it couldn't come any sooner. For some, it's a lot to take in right now. Whether you want to admit it or not, we've all changed over the last 12 months and our lives are about to change again over these next lot of months. Now, it's not like we're just gonna pick off or pick up, sorry, where we left off. Things are different now. People are different. Our way of thinking about life, our community, uh, the workplace, um, our friends and family, it's all changed. So over these next few months, when life changes again, when restrictions finally lift, how will you see the world around you? Back in March 2020, we were halfway through part one of a three-part series on love. It was entitled Love Yourself. Its premise was to make sure, whilst looking out and caring for others, that we made sure that we took care of ourselves. When we get hurt or we feel tired, we sometimes take time out for our bodies to recover, or well, that's what's advised to do. But the same goes with our mental health. When we need to take time out to heal after we've perhaps got burnt out, or we've had a tough day or a hard week, there's a lot to be said for a nice bath or shower, perhaps a, a nice long walk, or maybe just getting to bed earlier. So we continued with that theme and we followed that into the next theme, which was entitled Loving Others. The main scripture used for both of these themes was the same one. It was Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. For you have been called to live in freedom, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. 
for the whole law can be summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbour as yourself. So we continued on learning how to love ourselves and learning how to show love to the people around us. Now this was right at the stage where everyone was out helping the community with hampers, grocery deliveries, making sure people had enough. I mean, the spirit of community was fantastic. The world around us was changing and we were changing along with it. Now, people can sometimes rip one another apart over the most trivial things, never mind the events of the last 12 months and who did what. During my lifetime being around church and growing up within church life, I've seen how people in church can quickly attack one another over church politics, how they attack one another over having different opinions, how men and women destroy each other over something insignificant. And that's just the church leadership. <laughs> just kidding. But seriously, the freedom that we read about in that scripture, it's the freedom to not attack and say and do what we like. It is the freedom to deal with your emotions first before you approach someone. It's the freedom to create a, a platform of unconditional love and acceptance. You mustn't use your freedom as an excuse to sin. So yes, let's call it as it is. For example, it's a sin to verbally attack your brother or sister behind their back just because you have a different opinion on a subject matter than they do. That is a sin. Now, I'm not saying that the other person wasn't in the wrong, but it reminds me of what Pastor Trevor said even a few weeks back when he used the classic, when you point your finger at someone, don't forget there are three pointing right back at you. Now, Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 7, Why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log, a plank in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, Hey, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. I love that. First get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Because I think when you see that log, that plank in your own eye, and you deal with that, you might just look at your brother or sister and that situation again and think twice. Well, maybe I was blowing that out of proportion. Turns out I was just blindsided. One thing I've learned over the years is that people won't always agree with you on everything. But Jesus' love calls us to always treat each other with love and respect, no matter what. A lot of this is very evident in a relationship, romantic or friendship. I know a lot of people in relationships and I know a lot of people who want to be in a relationship. And I think the thing that comes with or is welcomed or sought after in a relationship is the support and to hear we're doing a good job or we've made the right choice. A wee unexpected dose of encouragement. Now, I can tell you firsthand, if I buy a pair of trainers that my wife doesn't like, you better believe she can find the words to tell me, to describe how she feels as she looks down at them. I mean, sometimes she doesn't even have to use words at all. But mainly these words are based around, did you keep the receipt? Or how long uh, do they give you to return them? But on the other side of that coin, if I buy a pair of trainers that's not repulsive to her eyes, She'll casually comment, remarking with some encouragement on my good choice. Now, that little unexpected encouragement, that small piece of unexpected support, knowing that apparently I made a good choice at these trainers, jeepers, something so small has so much power behind it. 
and I have the best wife ever. I know I joke around, but in all seriousness, I couldn't do this without her. She is 50% of everything I'm not, and I'm definitely 50% of everything she's not. But that makes a solid 100%. Add in my son Charlie, well, that's like a cherry on top. We both know what to say to each other to pick each other up. And we know what we shouldn't say to each other that will bring us down. Now, that's a small example and a small insight into my relationship. So for you, yeah, it could be your marriage or any other relationship. I'm not necessarily talking about marriage here. But if this last 12 months has taught us anything, it's that life is extremely unpredictable and can change so quickly. I've sadly officiated at more funerals than I would like to remember. I stand there and I hear families talk about their loved ones and a recurring theme is, I should have told you more often, I love you. Standing there and hearing those words and then having to speak after, my heart breaks right there. As for so many of us, we know what we should do. We just haven't pushed ourselves to start with those three little words. To not only say, but to repeat those three little words and more. I love you. That looks really good. That tastes really good. Hey, really appreciated your help today. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, Paul wrote, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. I mean, it's stuff that we're probably thinking anyways. It's just the enemy has caused us for some reason. Perhaps we think we're being patronizing or, or, or something like it's, it's not in our nature to say such things. Well, that's where we're wrong. It is in our nature. We need to ask ourselves, have we been silenced? The list of things we could say, small things, encouraging things, supporting things with just a handful of words. It has so much power to lift someone right off the floor. You have that power. The enemy knows you have that power. And so in his sneaky way, he has silenced us and caused us to think, well, I can't say what I'm thinking. They know I appreciate them and the job that they're doing. She knows, he knows I, uh, that I love him. So, you know, I don't need to tell them. I certainly don't need to tell them every day, do I? Perhaps you still wanted to tell your mother that she's a good mother. Or say to your friend what their love and their care and their friendship mean to you. Or thank someone that you work with for their support. If you still want to do that and you have that feeling of I should have done that already when this video comes to an end pick up the phone and do it say those encouraging uplifting words to someone you'll probably have no idea the support you'll have just given to them with so little said that's what we need to do as we enter into this next stage of our lives changing again we don't need to tear into each other or bring someone down just because we did, you didn't, he said, she said, I saw a photo online. Thankfully, that time is coming to an end. Moving forward, we need encouragement, not dismantlement. Perhaps you wanted to apologize to someone for something you did. Maybe you need to clear the air with someone, but you've kept quiet for too long and now you think it's going to be awkward. We say things like it's never too late to pick up the phone, but at some stage it will be too late to say anything. And you too could be saying those words I hear only too often. I wish I had of, but now it's too late. Don't find yourself in a place of regret. Say what you want to say now. Ask for God's guidance before you pick up the phone so that you don't say something that'll hurt even more. Even though you meant to say something good, but it came out bad. Building up and encouragement. That's our way forward. As we see these restrictions lift and start to see more 
of each other again. Let's learn from these past 12 months, making sure we're not being blindsided or silenced by the enemy. Ask Jesus to help you to treat others in such a way they can see him through you. I'll see you next time. You are